Okay, we got another person coming in. That's the whole thing. The minute I'm gonna start this, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get everybody. That's how this goes. Um, so 12.05, I'll get started. People come in, I'll just let them in as we go. All right, you can see this. Yes, you can see the screen. Cool. All right, this is no more stock photos in senior living, how to make your residents happy and exceed family expectations. So you can take actual photos of your residents instead of just relying on these stock photos, which I keep seeing everywhere. And oddly enough, it's like always the same pictures. <laughs> I think it's so strange. So here's my info, um, you know, this, this is being recorded. I will upload it to YouTube. So if you love this, you want to share it with somebody, you can definitely do that. I will send out the replay. This is me. I'm Rachel Wonderland. I'm a dementia care consultant. I work with clients all over the country, predominantly assisted living buildings who also offer dementia care and want to do more. Uh, typically the corporate building, the corporate company will hire me and I will work with them to build or uh, help them develop more of a dementia care program than they already have. So does your website look like this? All these uh, pictures and all these kinds of things. It says we offer memory care, but then never actually defines what that program looks like. I see this all the time. I go into communities and um, I go into these communities talk to these companies and so often I just see that it says you know on their website it says memory care it'll be like somewhere buried on the website memory care but it never says anything about what that program is and you're like okay does this company actually offer dementia care or do they just feel like they have to say memory care it's like this amorphous undefined thing I see that all the time there's a quick mention of dining on the website, but nothing more. Nobody talks about it. There is a confusing reference to Alzheimer's and dementia, but that's it. Like maybe they say the word dementia if you're lucky. For the most part though, a lot of these senior living websites, and I'm sure you've all experienced this, just say memory care. They'll say like memory care, we have dementia care, but they don't define what that is at all, which pretty much just means that they have like a secure dementia unit, but they don't have a brand. There's nothing there. It mentions staff education, but doesn't actually say how they're trained. So it's just like, yeah, we train our staff. Um, there's zero info on calendars. There's nothing up there for families to look at and go, oh, what will my loved one be doing all day? Nope, none of that. And then here's the kicker. This is why I did this webinar. There are a bunch of these photos. Yeah, I've actually seen a lot of these on companies' websites. And I did a little experiment. I went to Dreamstime, which is one of those stock photo websites. You can go to iStock, you can go to Dreamstime, you can go to wherever. If you go to Google and type in stock photos, you'll find a place. Um, so I just Googled dementia to see what would come up. And it says related searches, okay? But when you type in dementia, this is what you see. Somebody with their arm around an older adult, somebody with a doctor showing the person something on a script, you know, someone taking pills. Here's another one. I typed in senior caregiver. Guess what I got? About the same ones. I have seen one, two, three. I've seen at least three of these in real life on people's websites. And I, in particular, recognize this older lady in the blue with the collar. I see her all the time. <laughs> that woman is making bank off of people buying those stock photos. Here's another one, senior caregiver. It's the same lady. She's so, she's really sweet looking. Um, but it's just the same kind of thing. It's like, here's a younger person with their arm around an older person. And on these senior living websites, this is all it is. It's like, we have dementia care, look at our photos. 
but they're all just stock pictures. It doesn't tell you anything about that program. I talk to potential clients all the time and I know that it's not going to work out. I know they're not going to hire me when they are resolute in the fact that they have a dementia care program and then you go to their website and this is all you see. Because that means there's a disconnect between what they actually offer and what they think they're providing. Here's another one, dementia. I put this one up in particular because I hate a few of these pictures. You see this a lot where someone is like, it's like a tree or it's like someone's head and there's like leaves coming off of it. What? That's not what dementia looks like. What, what, what does that mean? Um, I, I don't like that at all. I think it's really um, grossly stereotyped and bizarre. Um, you've got this woman down here like looking sad while looking at a calendar. It's like, what? Um, a doctor looking inquisitively at a chart of brains. Diagnosis dementia. They've got pills and a needle. I don't know. Um, I hovered over this picture so you can see memory loss due to dementia or brain damage. Man losing parts of head, a symbol of decreased mind function. Memory loss due to dementia or brain damage. Side stock photos. Okay. I mean, you can't blame the stock photo people too much. They don't know what they're talking about with this kind of thing. And they're just trying to make a buck selling their stock photos. So you can't blame them. But what I can blame people for is putting this kind of stuff on their websites. I've seen these, right? We've all seen that lady in blue. Oh, she's being helped down the stairs. Oh, she's looking at an iPad. You know, we've all seen these same photos. And in fact, I, I've seen this lady on a billboard around here in Pittsburgh. I've seen this lady. Um, so again, you can't blame the stock photo people, but we can do is say to the senior living companies, hey, maybe it's time. We actually talked about what your dementia care program is. And then you put that on your website and not all of these ridiculous images. <laughs> and again, I really hate the one where you can just see the guy's brain disappearing. Like what, what? I don't like that. So here are some rules for your site. Uh, and, and I would love for you to take these and run with them and, and you know, actually utilize them in dementia care. One, don't be afraid to say dementia. Families are looking for this information. So often I, I go to companies' websites and they just never say the word dementia. Like maybe they hint at memory care or they say, or they say something like, um, we cater to people with uh, memory struggles. And it's like, okay, just say the D word, say dementia. Because I think, I think companies assume like families are going to see dementia and go, whoa, I don't want my loved one living there. But what they don't realize is that a lot of times the families are coming to the website to get information. And they're like, oh my gosh, I hope there's something about dementia on this site. And then when there's not, they leave. Have a branded named program. And I got a little asterisk here for you, which is call me. <laughs> um, building a dementia care program doesn't have to be painful. It doesn't have to be hard. In fact, I love doing it. I actually just signed with another six month client very recently. Um, really excited to get started with them. We're going to be building a dementia care program for them from the ground up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Avoids documentary. Oh my God. Um, it's not hard or expensive to take your own photos. I mean, you know, years ago it was, but what do we all have now? We all have these. These are essentially ridiculously expensive little computers that live in your pocket. This thing takes amazing photos. Um, I make my car videos. If you watch my YouTube channel, they're all in my car and I film them on this camera slash phone slash mini computer. Um, you know, we all have great phones these days that function as wonderful digital cameras. There's really no excuse to not have uh, pictures. And you want to stand out, right? You know, like I said, I see that lady, the same lady uh, in blue. I see her all the time. So do you want your website to look just like everybody else's? You know, where you're like, oh, oh it's that lady again. <laughs> um, 
as we say in improv, I've been doing improv comedy for over a decade. Show, don't tell. So if you just have on your website, like, we have a dementia care program. We take care of people with dementia and Alzheimer's, you know, because they never say Alzheimer's correctly. And also you don't need to mention Alzheimer's because Alzheimer's is the most common cause of dementia. Um, show it, show what your program is with photos, with calendars, with imagery of your actual program and not stock pictures that don't tell these families anything. <laughs> In fact, I think families would be like kind of shocked to come to your website and see photos of, of real residents. They'd be like, wow, this is, huh, this is unique. It would stand out to them because they never see it. And most importantly, uh, you can't say it if you don't do it. So I'm telling you all these things, but if your dementia care program actually doesn't do what you say it does, well, then please don't put that on your website. False advertising. So talked about branding uh, briefly here. Coming up with a name and a logo for a program. When I'm working with a company who wants to develop a dementia care program, maybe they have one, but it's not totally rolled out or it's not where they want it to be. Maybe they don't have one and they need one. I help them build uh, everything for it, including a name and a logo. So I actually hire out to get in a designer who will build a logo because while I'm pretty handy, I definitely uh, am not a graphic designer. So I will hire for that. Um, working with a company called Cardinal Senior Management, started brainstorming, okay, what do we do for their dementia care program? What do we call it? I looked up a lot of names of birds and pitched them a list of birds. We ended up with Wren and you can see the logo there is what we came up with. Um, a wren is known as the king of birds in mythology. It's widely respected. And so a sentence like, this resident is in our wren program, sounds a lot better than this resident has dementia or this person is in our memory care program, right? It sounds a lot better. Same thing here. I'm uh, working with a company called English Meadows uh, based out of Virginia. And using the name English Meadows, what do we want to do? We probably want to stay in that same kind of thought process, right? We had Cardinal Senior Management. Let's have something to do with birds. We have English Meadows, Meadows, Fields, Hills, got it, Lavender Hills. Um, I got a graphic designer who put together a multitude of beautiful logos for them um, that are now on, on their website. And that's a, a big part of what we're doing, not just, you know, building a better life for the residents living with dementia, but also making it so when families come to your website, they're not like, what, what are we talking about? You know, it's not this amorphous thing where you're just saying, oh, we have memory care. Where, what, how, who, <laughs> what is it? Here is um, a close up. And again, this was taken on an iPhone. Okay. This is a great picture, um, great quality. This is of a dessert that that past that a client English Meadows put together for their Lavender Hills Dementia Care Program. One of the big things that we talked about as as the organization was was working on this was what's important to English Meadows. One of the things that was important to English Meadows is like home feel cooking. You know, comfort. Um, you know, they had a great dining program. They had a great dining director at one of their buildings. And he absolutely took the lead on this. Um, he got red plates and bowls, which I always recommend for our residents living with cognitive impairments. And then put together a snack program, which is awesome. The residents make help make the snack earlier in the day. And then later in the afternoon, get to eat what they made. And of course they eat it earlier in the day too, but it's this whole like integrated program where snack is not just a thing where a cart goes around and everybody gets a snack. The residents actually help make the snack. Um, so they got this waffle, got a waffle maker and all they do are, you know, the residents sit around, watch as the chef is helping to, you know, make these waffles. The residents help mix up the batter and then they become these really awesome little waffle bowls that they can get ice cream out of later. Again, how did they take this picture, right? This is something perfect for your website. This is another organization I worked with called Capital Senior Living. They are um, probably the biggest 
company I've worked with. So their challenge has been and continues to be rolling the program out across all of their buildings. They have a large portfolio and they continue to do very well in, in doing that. They've been working really hard getting those buildings um, rolled out into their program called Magnolia Trails. And one of the things on their website that I really appreciate that we worked on was laying out what the actual program is. So when you go to Capital Site and you go to the Magnolia Trails page, they actually tell you what their dementia care program is. The pillars of care. It's not just like, we have dementia care. We'll let you guess what it is. You know, but it actually says, here's what's important about our dementia care program. Families do want to see this. Avoiding the word dementia is not doing your organization any favors at all. Um, I, I say this all the time. The only type of care organization who's never hired me is independent living. Independent living will not hire me for anything because they're afraid to say dementia, even though many of their residents have cognitive impairments, many, but they are worried about their clientele. They don't want to say to the families dementia on their website, even though they probably could benefit from having some sort of dementia care um, program, even if it's just a little bit of added engagement to people who are showing signs of cognitive decline. Back to Cardinal Senior Management, this is something else we did on their website. Um, I was helping them do educational series, right? I was doing support groups for them. So they listed them right on their website. Families were able to go to the Cardinal website, go to the um, dementia care page, and then click from there into the webinar. Again, there's so many ways to now, especially these days, use the technology that we have available to us and actually uh, assist and create programs that make sense and we can show the programs um, off to our families. We don't have to be afraid you know, to show what the dementia care program looks like. So when we're building dementia care programs, I also want to point out, you know, as you're looking for photos, as you're looking for artwork, as you're looking for things to put on your website or in your communities. Um, I got this message on Instagram a while back from somebody who was really excited to show me what she had done for her building. She was working in this one senior living building. And I, I unfortunately had to crush her dreams because she sent me this. And I, I said, hey, um, thank you. These are really not appropriate for senior living. These look very childish. I mean, they're cute, but they don't make sense for uh, what this actually is. Um, this looks like it belongs in a preschool. It's, you know, while it's cute, it's not age appropriate and um, it's not really dementia friendly. So we wanna make sure we're doing things that are age appropriate, dementia friendly when we're building those dementia care programs. Here's something I always recommend when I'm working with organizations. And again, this is stuff that's gonna set you up for taking really great pictures with what? Your magic computer that lives in your pocket for your website to hang up on your walls. Um, when I was a dementia care director, I started a Facebook page for the company uh, that I worked at. And I would put up photos of the residents who had already, you know, the families had signed off and said it was okay. And I would always post these pictures um, for the, uh, I keep letting people into the room. I kept posting these pictures on the Facebook page for families to see. And everybody loved it because it was actual pictures of residents doing things that they enjoyed. It wasn't just stock photos. And in the beginning of this presentation, we went through a bunch of the stock photos that we all see and we've all seen a million times on everybody's websites. And they're all the same pictures. It's crazy to me. So I always recommend companies look into what I call creativity boxes, which are pre-made, easy to run, easy to do activities that the staff actually does with the residents. So not just the program director, but actually the care staff can pull out and use. Here's one. Um, people keep calling me and I don't know why. 
Um, so I love these uh, baby socks as a creativity box. These are a great program for your residents to be able to do. They able to fold, sort, organize. Um, that is 100% the way to go when you're looking for small programming. Um, this woman on the left was a seamstress for GM. So she's stringing these like pool noodles because they're big, they're easy to hold. And all of these pictures are things that you can put on your company's website. You don't need stock photos. You can actually show what your residents are doing during the day. It's a lot more powerful and it's a lot more um, engaging for families, right? Here's another one. This guy was an expert at getting knots out. So this is a community, this is a uh, company I worked with. They sent me some photos of some of their creativity boxes and things people were doing. Again, more photos. Um, one, uh, one company I was working with recently, I brought over some puzzles that were dementia appropriate, dementia friendly, and these residents were able to go through and actually put together all these puzzles and they had a great time, right? You can put these kinds of pictures up on social media, up on Facebook, up on you know your company's website. Company websites do not have to be just locked down, prim and proper you know, families really want to know that their loved one's going to be engaged wherever they're moving. They don't want to assume that you have a dementia care program when they really don't know. Here's a great example of a calendar um, from Lavender Hills. Lavender Hills is the dementia care program that we built for English Meadows Senior Living. And uh, Lavender Hills, this particular building has a really excellent calendar. You can see they have a lot listed here. Uh, you got the creativity boxes, exercise, crafts, all sorts of different things. And I mentioned earlier on the call um, how important snack was at English Meadows and how they were building snack into their program in a really interesting, fun way. Great, have Jill. this on your website, right? Have your calendar listed on your site. There's no reason that the family can't come to your company's site and download that month's calendar. I Rachel, I have a question you. for you. Sorry. Um, two questions, actually. Sure. One is, we're rebuilding with the adult day once we open. I'm rebuilding the um, uh, Alzheimer's care program or the memory care program, I should say. Is there any way that you can share some calendars with me so I can figure out what I'm doing um, to make sure it's appropriate? That's one. And the other is, do we need to get photo releases to put um, members' pictures on our website? So I have a how to build your dementia care program um, like kit of sorts that I can okay. share with that I can share with you. Um, yeah, so I I do have something like that. Um, if you are interested in, in talking about that, and then you do need photo release forms. Um, so Sorry you know, if you have a, a client resident who wouldn't couldn't be in the photos, you just got to get the family to sign off um, on everybody who can. When I was a dementia care director, you know, out of like 35 residents, maybe two of them, the families wouldn't sign or didn't want them to be in photos. But for the most part, people did. Um, with life stations, you know, if you're building life stations in your, uh, in your community, each building honestly should have at least three. Um, and these are the ones I recommend. Always a baby station always a pet station, um, office, tool, workspace, laundry, vanity, all of these things are great uh, ones to choose from and making that a standard part of your program. You can see that when I'm actually working with a company, before I go to some of their buildings, they'll often send me photos and I will mark them up and send the photos back and say, okay, you know, what's this? What are we doing here? Why is this over here? Um, an example on the right, you can see they have these uh, weird like little houses in a little block on the wall. I think that's really childish. I don't know why it's there, but you see that a lot in dementia care, right? You see like, oh, the residents will love to play with that stuff. What? No, no, they won't. They're not going to do that. That's not going to be a thing. Um, 
So I actually will mark up photos that buildings send me and go, all right, put this here, move this here, do this. One of my favorite things to do is when I go and I visit with these communities is to walk in and literally spend the afternoon with them rearranging and making the interior the way it needs to be. And typically the company will have already purchased the things that they need to set that up. And I'll just show up and we do like an interior design renovation day. And it's a lot of fun. Here's some really successful life stations that I've helped organizations to build. On the left, you know, this corner, it's just full of whatever. And on the right, we've got this really delightful baby station. Baby stations always go well, they're always a hit. These are adorable. Um, I love what this organization has done with these live stations. You got a coffee station, you've got um, like a vanity. And the other thing is, you know, you don't need to spend a lot. So when I talked about those, you know, those photos, the stock imagery, and I'll go back and, you know, anybody who missed those, I'll show you some of the stock imagery. Um, you don't need stock imagery when you have stuff like this at your, at your buildings. You just don't. You can actually take a picture of what you do have and show it off because it's worth showing off. Same thing here. We've got the pets. We've got the laundry station. These are website worthy images. You don't need stock when you have a good dementia care program. And that's really what it comes down to. If you have a great program, you don't need to fall back on stock imagery. So bringing it all together. It's crucial to have a dementia care program at your buildings because you can't sell what you don't have. So when I'm talking to sales teams, the one the sales teams who are struggling to, you know, get families interested in moving a loved one into that building, they're struggling because there's no dementia care program that they feel comfortable selling. They don't feel comfortable telling families about a program that they're not excited about. Um, and you can't impress families with words alone. Pictures really tell a story. Stock photos, not impressive. Um, they don't tell a story. They don't share information. Everyone has them. It's, they're everywhere. They're ubiquitous. You know, um, It doesn't tell anybody anything about your dementia care program that isn't different from the person down the street. Your competition down the street has the same stock photos that we've all seen a million times. They do. Um, you know, so let me just show you back to these stock photos, right? We talked about at the beginning, all, all these companies have these same stock photos. And it's, I said this before, but this lady's in every single stock photo. I don't know what her deal is, but she, she's making good money just being in everybody's stock pictures. Um, and this is me looking on dreams time. This is me looking on different, um, looking up different things, looking up different words and seeing the same type of, of imagery I've seen on everybody's website. So do you need help putting this together? As you're working on your dementia care program, can teams do it themselves? Absolutely. You definitely can. But I highly recommend if your organization is thinking about doing it yourself to one, reach out to me because I have some tools that you could use to help get you started. But then two, to really put a team together of people who are dedicated to doing that thing. Um, you know, it does not work if you are the only person on your organization who thinks that you need a better dementia care program. It's not going to fly. For companies who do want to work with me, this is my step one. It's $2,000. It's called Evaluate and Escalate. And it is a discovery call and roadmap with me. We sit down. I actually have one booked for next week. Um, we sit down and on a Zoom call like this, and I chat with you and your team at most, usually five people. We talk through what your organization needs. And seven days later, we get back together and I give to you a roadmap what I think you should do, could do, and, you know, would do to make your dementia care program that much better. And this is what we do. We work on staffing and education, branding and marketing, family education and move-ins, programming, dining, interior design, all that. I provide you with a written assessment of all these key areas, including proposed solutions and next steps. So for companies who say, we want you to build this program for us, 
I work in three month, six month or 12 month programs to put these things together for them. Um, and this is what we do. We work on every single aspect of the program. I showed you all earlier, some of these logos that I helped teams to put together. We got the Ren program, we've got Lavender Hills. Somebody just joined, but it's a little late. <laughs> um, uh, so we've got Lavender Hills. All these things are, you know, as we've been working through building dementia care programs for these companies, this is what I'm doing. Um, helping them create a branded solution for their dementia care program so they don't end up with all of these pictures on their website, which tell us nothing. So again, bringing it all together. Stock photos aren't impressive. What is impressive is if your organization has a dementia care program that's worth talking about and is ready, it's ready to be on the website. It's ready to uh, be available for families to see. So I'm going to stop the share now. Thanks for joining. And I want to take any questions that you all might have, anything that you're um, working on, on your own program, or if you have any specific questions about anything that I can kind of tell you about right off the bat. And Jana says, this is fascinating. My background is in gerontology. I've never seen these kinds of activities. Awesome, thanks. I also have a, I have a master's in gerontology. But you know, what's interesting about gerontology is, you know, when I graduated my master's, nobody else in my like cohort was doing dementia care. Like I was the only one doing dementia specific stuff because there's so many ways to to work in aging. Um, and if you're not in dementia specific care, um, typically you don't know all that much about the niche because it is super, super duper niche. Uh, yeah. Did you get your um, degree from? Uh, UNC Greensboro. Mine is from Kansas State. Kansas State, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Oh, did you, say, did you say Rutgers? Rutgers, yeah, University. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, you're in Jersey. I'm from Jersey, yeah, Jersey. Uh, yeah, I went to. <laughs> I'm from Jersey, but I actually went to college at uh, Mary Washington in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And you, know, you, li you lived right down the street from me, actually. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We figured that out, didn't we? And then, um, and then I went to uh, UNC Greensboro for for grad school. I do have a question for you. Yeah. Our center, our adult pro day program is one, basically one big room um, where things are, you know, people are intermixed and everything. And we have people coming that have physical challenges, but cognitively are fine that have, um, you know, the whole spectrum from mm -hmm. dementia to cognitively impaired, um, uh, uh, um, not autism. Yeah, autism and bipolar mm -hmm. and that type of stuff. So it's a whole range. And we have hospice too. Okay. But we're one room. How do you set up the stations so that it's not, deg not degrading, that's not the right word, but it's not looked at as a negative when people have of higher function come into the center? So, um, I've found that generally people who the stations are not for don't really take an interest in them. So if they don't, you know, if they see the baby station and they don't, they're not attracted to it, they don't go to it to use it. Um, they probably are not going to have a problem with it per se. What you could do is kind of tuck them into corners almost. So if you have an area, um, you know, where more of your, clients with dementia hang out, you could do it there. I think as long as you make the stations look as good as you can, it's mm -hmm. not going to be a big deal. And the baby station is always a hit. Um, you may be surprised. You may have people who, you know, have, have dementia, but it's kind of like intermixed with bipolar disorder or intermixed with something else who really <laughs> like the babies. And I've also seen where, you know, people don't necessarily, like if they don't think it's real, they still like it. Um, so you could also, the, the pet station is another one, especially if you get the pets that move from Joy for All Pets, that's an option. Thank you. Yeah.
but people people tend to you know and if families have an issue with it, I, I think it comes down to education, you know, saying to 